Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysha's here, and I'm back yet again for yet another Diamond Select video, and today comes courtesy of my friends over at Diamond Select. This one, I'm very excited for. I'm a huge fan of Darkwing Duck. The Disney Afternoon was a big thing when I was a kid, I used to watch all the shows, but Darkwing Duck was something very interesting, very Batman-ish. So you get the idea, right? Now, all over the box, you get really cool imagery of Darkwing Duck. And this box, no joke, is filled to the brim. And no joke, it is enormous. When you first get it, you'll laugh, because I sure did. It's huge. Now, like I said, nice pictures of Darkwing Duck all over the place. And on the back side, you get to see a little bit of a write-up. You get to see everything that this has, including 12 points of articulation per figure interchangeable parts and these figures were designed by david forrest from kinetic underground and sculpted by varner studios pretty cool right tmnt people know what i'm talking about now darkwing duck he is the terror that flaps in the night and of course nega duck who is basically the inverse of darkwing duck from the old cartoon show but he is the screeching fingernail on the chalkboard of justice so this is gonna be an absolute blast sit back relax grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee we're about to get dangerous this is a look at the brand new darkwing duck 2-pack featuring darkwing duck and nega duck by diamond select and to all those citizens of St. Canard out there, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Why? Well, we got old toys, we got new toys, we got daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So, we're going to jump right into it with Negaduck, the evil counterpart of Darkwing Duck. And he's pretty darn cool looking, right? But there's going to be some things to talk about. Now, with the hands, both Darkwing Duck and Nega Duck come with the exact same hands. Some hands are going to be a lot more useful than others, but one thing I will warn you is that there is white paint. They're all over the hands, and when you have white painted hands and you have accessories that are dark... Well, guess what's going to happen, right? So, my advice to you is go very easy, very light when fitting the weapons into the hands, and you might even want to heat some of them up. Now, one of the first accessory weapons for Nega Duck is, of course, a machete. A duck with a machete. Go figure, right? But, yes, he does hold it very nicely. He's nice and sturdy. Pretty much holds his position, right? More or less. More on that. Now, he does come with his signature chainsaw weapon. It's nicely sculpted, nicely detailed, very cartoony, and very befitting of the character of Negaduck. However, because of his articulation, which I will soon show you, he really can't hold it how you would typically hold a chainsaw. And you kind of have to finagle it within the hands that they give you. Now, oddly enough, as this is a Disney brand, Usually, they're not always a fan of having guns with toys that are based off of their properties. But lo and behold, Negaduck does come with a giant black bazooka. It's solid black, but it is sculpted beautifully. And it's pretty cool that they got that in there. Now, with the given hands, yes, he will hold the bazooka quite nicely. However, in some instances, you're really going to have to position him just right. He will get very top heavy, back heavy, gun holding heavy. You know what I mean? He'll go toppling very quick. But once you get him in that sweet spot, he does look good. Now, he does come with a very cartoony old fashioned bomb. Batman 66 fans, you'll know what I'm talking about. It has a brown wick to it, an effect piece where it looks like it lit. That would have been kind of cool. Now, unfortunately, with the bomb, it doesn't have a designated spot where it can situate itself upright. So it'll keep moving around. Also, he doesn't have hands that can really hold it. And in talking about getting him in that sweet spot, you're going to run into that a whole heck of a lot. Now, he does come with several head portraits. They're not vastly different, at least between these two. One of them being the mouth is open. One of them is not basically the same expression these ones do fare a little bit better in the paint, and I'll soon show you all of that. Be very careful with the hairs, the duck hairs on the top of his heads, and then those on his cheeks. They're very sharp, and they're very cumbersome when you want to swap the heads. Now, 
in looking at the head portraits between Negaduck and Darkwing Duck, that would have been really cool if you could swap the top parts of the heads with the beaks so you could have multiple expressions, right, between the two figures. But he does come with a very windswept cape. And one thing to point out is that, unfortunately, the yellow on the collar when you put it on the figure, won't exactly match the yellow that is already on the suit. It's a nice cape, though, and he does have his signature hat, much like Darkwing Duck, right? Now, one problem with the hat, as you'll soon see, the hole in the hat is very small. It doesn't really fit all too well, and that's kind of a problem when you look at the figure in totality. However, let's just say... In situating them on your toy shelf, windswept cape, dastardly face, you've got the big old hats. Yeah, that does look really cool. However, this particular cape will definitely hinder what articulation it does have. And as one of the last accessories, he does come with a plastic stand. Now, this is one of those stands where I'm going to tell you honestly... It's needed, but it doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. So remember that whole holding the bazooka thing and being top heavy? You basically can fit it underneath the weapons and it will just make them a lot more sturdy, right? Now, in terms of Negaduck, that is a great expression. Well sculpted, that just looks cool. And across the board, let me just say this. They're very well sculpted action figures. There's no question about that, but the paint on these figures is atrocious. There are little dabs here and there. There's paint that doesn't match. There's little hiccups here and there. And one thing I really need to point out because people private messaged me on this, their arms seemingly snapped off at the elbow. So what I did was that I heated up both of these figures, gave them the old dunk in the hot water, and made absolutely sure before I started moving him around that nothing snapped. And I had no problems with it. But as you can see, lots of problems with paint. And this is right out of the box. This is nothing that I've done in moving the parts around and swapping and everything else. The articulation in the head is pretty solid. He's got a long neck and you get lots of up and down, left and right momentum. The arms will go out to a certain degree, as with the elbows. And that's where I think a lot of people who really wanted a more articulated Darkwing Duck, Negaduck figure, you're going to fall short with that. While these do have articulation, it's very limited. Not that that's a bad thing, but for having this type of articulation you'd kind of expect it to do a little bit more. These are very much action figures. You set them and forget them. He also has peg holes on the bottom of his feet, which could be useful for stands, let me just tell you. But I digress. These are figures that are very frustrating, especially when you want to swap the heads and if you want to swap the capes, right? Because the capes are this whole other thing. <laughs> Let me just tell you, you can hear the frustration in my voice. Negaduck's cape will fit rather snugly. You can see the paint problems again right there on the cape. God, it's it's it, there's a lot, let me tell you what. But in putting the cape on, swapping the heads, having all those sharp pieces, I know it sounds like I'm just ragging on it at this point. It was frustrating because I was really looking forward to this but it's quite a pain in some instances until you get everything put together and just put them on your shelf and just let them be. So when you want to swap the heads, the capes, it's a whole thing because most of the time the cape will come off. It'll come detached and then you got to put the hat on. And the hat, as you can see, because of the tufts of his duck fur or whatever you got going on, the feathers, the hats don't exactly situate on the head perfectly, where I would say that it needs to be down a whole heck of a lot more. So not only is the hole in the head not big enough, but then you have to contend with those spikes on the top of his head. It's very frustrating. But when you get them situated, that's when you just go, there you go, there's Darkwing Duck and Negaduck. But I know that is definitely not going to go over 
for a lot of you out there. You want an articulated figure you can swap out, play with the whole nine yards. And of course, now with Darkwing Duck, he has some very cool things going on. But in terms of the paint problems and everything else, this one really does take a hit. Now, like I said, he does come with the same exact hands as Negaduck, so it doesn't really matter. You swap them out. He does come with his gas gun, which is really well sculpted, well done. Now, I had to heat up this hand that holds it to even get the gun. It's a very tight grip, so I'm just keeping the hand on there from now on. However, while there is some pink detail amidst the black, on the trigger especially, it's not that great. It's kind of sloppy, but he does hold the gun quite nicely. And again, I'm really glad that they were able to put this version of his gas gun in the packaging. And as a nice touch, he does have several pieces you can swap out for the actual gun. So you have a grapple, and then you have the extended grapple, and I totally dig that. That is very fun. That's very cool to see because you simply just put the grapple in the gas gun, basically. And yeah, he holds it quite nicely. Same thing with the more extended version. Now, I will tell you this. Like Negaduck, you really have to get these in that position so they don't go toppling over. But when you want the evildoers to suck gas, he has a gas effect. The only downside about this is that it's extremely heavy for the figure when you put it in the gas gun. But thankfully, we have that stand, right? That's where that really is going to come in handy because when you want to do the whole arm outstretched gas gun, blowing the gas, yes, you're definitely going to need that. That is the only way he's going to keep this particular position. Now, the extra head portrait, unfortunately on mine, I have a paint defect where they basically printed the eyelid wrong. See how it's all the way into the pupil? That's, of course, not ideal. It's actually something that I'm like, God, of course, right on the eye, right? So that's a paint problem. Now, again, to reiterate, it would have been really cool to be able to swap the top of the heads, the beaks, maybe get some different expressions going. And I have to say, while it's an interesting Darkwing Duck expression, it's not exactly one I want to use, especially since... He's kind of looking off to the side the whole time. Now, much like Negaduck, he does come with that more windswept cape. This is in Darkwing Duck's colors, but this is right out of the box, and you can see how chewed up it is, right? Especially in that top part where it hooks onto the suit. Thankfully, the purple part of the suit was not affected, but yeah, inside the cape, that is all kinds of chewed up, and yes, he does fare a little bit better in the paint matching from the top part of that cape to his suit. He also gets his signature hats, all of which are the exact same between him and Negaduck. It's going to be the same exact hole where it doesn't go that deep, and as I'll soon show you, it's not going to really form fit to his head as much as you would think for Darkwing Duck. However, I do like this head portrait for Darkwing Duck. He's more of the happy-go-lucky kind of look to him, which definitely does work for the character, but then you also want him more squinting and doing his mysterious look. But the paint on this head portrait is just a mishigash of everything bleeding on to the white. The rest of the suit does fare a little bit better. Again, same exact articulation. Heat these figures up, go very easy in the arms, especially at the elbow. Don't force anything right out the box. Learn the articulation, which, if we're being honest, is very limited, right? As I previously mentioned, this cape is actually pretty good looking. That's at least one that made it out with any scuffage. He's got the same peg holes on the bottom. He can kick out, kick off to the side. But again, these are very frustrating to pose out. They're very much neutral. So when you get the hat on him, it's going to be just to right about there. It's not going to go any lower than that. I could see some people going, yeah, so what? And what's funny is that when you want to take photos or he's just on your shelf, right? The shadows that this head portrait get because of the brim of the hat, because it sits so high, Messes with the eyes, oddly enough, right? It kind of gives him doughy eyes. But when you move it back, now he's kind of surprised, right? But yes, the hat, for me, sits entirely too tall, right? It would be something that would have to go more towards his mask 
if anything, right? It's kind of like the old Playmates toy where you'd push a button, then the hat would pop up and down, right? That's really what it reminded me of. Just thought I was doing something wrong, to be honest with you. Now, there is a caveat to some of these problems, right? Like I said, you set them and forget them. That's it. Do you really want to do that? Well, I leave it up to you. That's really what I do with my figures. However, things like the gas. If the gun for Negaduck had been redesigned a little bit, you could have swapped parts and pieces between the two, had the gas come out of his gun. And in looking at this head portrait, well, it kind of looks purple when you got his hat on there, but this is the type of head portrait I would have liked to have seen for Darkwing Duck, more of a mean version, right? Where he's going to fight injustice in St. Canard. That would have been very cool. And just to show you what's come before as to what is happening now, we have the Playmates version, we have the Funko version, which is actually a really great representation of Darkwing Duck. It's very limited in the articulation, but again, that's not a bad thing. And much like these new Diamond Select versions, the sculpt is beautiful, but it's really the articulation that is sorely lacking. And when you want to see Negaduck to the old Megavolts from the old Playmates line, yes, Diamond Select. Just make some of these improvements with the paint and whatnot, but I can tell you from all the comments I've seen, people want Darkwing Duck action figures and the villains. And yes, my Megavolt still works to this day. Now, just to show you the scalature, right? There are a ton of brands out there these days, and Darkwing Duck will fit around that five inch mark. He's just below Marvel Legends. He is the smallest of the bunch between Premium DNA, McFarlane, Hasbro, NECA Toys, and of course, Fresh Monkey Fiction. So these figures will definitely be their own scale to their own thing, but hey, let's get some more villains going. That's for sure. So. That will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Diamond Select Darkwing Duck and Nega Duck Action Figure 2-Pack. And again, thank you to my friends over at Diamond Select for sending this out for the purposes of this video. I'm going to tell you honestly, I like Darkwing Duck a whole heck of a lot, but this is a very frustrating set. If you are wanting to get this because, oh, you can just pose them out and do all kinds of crazy stuff, no, I'm going to stop you right there. The paint on these is pretty bad in some instances. That is very unfortunate. It might not be the same with yours, but in terms of posing them out, swapping the heads, swapping the capes, the hats, everything in that nature, they're frustrating. They're very frustrating toys. So unless you want them just to get them, you put the weapons in their hands, you get them all going and however you want to pose them out on your shelf and you never touch the things again. So it's up to you. But... You've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Darkwing Duck. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the low ratings that cancel your program. Poor Darkwing Duck. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.